Hello and welcome back to the channel. So this lecture is all about integrating Phoenix with Peak. So in the previous lecture, we have seen how we can set up the Phoenix and run some simple SQL commands on top of our edge based tables. So we have created one table and inserted some data in it by using the upsert and just retrieve that by using the select loss. But in this lecture, let's create one table in our edge base and then load the data through the pig script. So to do that, we just need to kick off the edge base service on our HDB sandbox and then start our Phoenix service by executing the SQL line.py. So that we'll get our Phoenix command line where we can submit our SQL statements. Then we can create the users table to insert our users data file. So I hope you already know that in our previous lecture, we have seen the data file, which is movies.users which contains the information related to the users which have like user ID, age, gender, occupation and the zip code where that user resides. So this all data files are related to the movies data set. So these users are nothing but given the ratings to the particular movie. So for this example, let's first kick off the Phoenix service, then we'll create a table, then we'll get our required files. So the files are nothing but our data file, which is movies.user. And then we will download the pig script as well. And then we'll learn how we can connect to the Phoenix and work with edge base with it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as usual, the first step would be to kick off your HDB sandbox and make sure that all the services are running fine. So once it is done, you just have to go to the Ambari and start our edge base service. So just go to your favorite browser and go to the local host 8080 and just log in as a maria underscore dev. So I hope you already know the credentials by now. And as you can see, all the services are running fine without any issues. So as the edge base will not start in the initial stage because initially it will be in the maintenance stage. So you just have to go to the edge base and manually start the service. So go to service actions and start the service. Confirm and let it run. It will take around one or two minutes. So just wait for it to complete. So as you can see, our edge based service has been successfully started. So just close it. And our next step would be we need to create a table in edge base so that we can put some data into it. So to do that, just go to the command line by using the putty terminal and log in as Maria underscore dev. So you know the password Maria underscore dev. And to get all the privileges, I'll recommend you to log in as a root user. So just go yes, you root, then give the password. And that's it. You have all the privileges now. So first thing is we need to kick off our Phoenix command line to do that. Just go to the specific directory, which is CD user slash HDP slash current slash Phoenix client. So it's like Phoenix dash client slash bin. So this is the bin folder for Phoenix client. So if you hit LS, you will get that SQL line dot PY. So since it is a Python file, so just type like Python and give like SQL line dot PY and hit enter. So let the service start. It will take some time. So right now it is kicking off the Phoenix service. And that's it. We are in the Phoenix command line now. So we can run some SQL commands to communicate with our edge based database. So to get all the tables, you know, the command like exclamation tables. So as you can see, these are all system generated tables. So first we need to create the users table. So let me first show you how the data file looks like. So this is our movies.users file, which has like user ID, then the age, gender, the occupation and the zip code where that user resides. So we just need to create these columns with the specific data type. So first will first two will be integer and the other three are var character because in some of the zip codes, there are some characters present. So to do that, just again, go to our Phoenix command line. And now quickly, let's create a table so that we can insert some data into it. So just give like create table and the table name would be users on the next line, give all the columns. So the first one is user ID having the integer data type and it should be not null because we need this field. And after that we have the age, which is again integer. Then we have like gender, which has character with only one length because, because it will be the M or F. Then the next one is occupation, which is the var care. And the last one is 
the zip code which is again var char because some of it has some characters present and after that we just have to give the constraint so just type like constraint the pk for primary key and type like primary key and in this case the user id would be the unique field so it will act as a primary key for this user's table so give like user id that's it close the bracket and execute it and our table has been created so if you just exclamation tables and here you can see our user's table has been created but since we just created this table there is no data present and in the last lecture we have seen how we can insert the data by using the upset command but we are not going to do that because we have like hundreds of record present in that users file and manually nobody will do it right so that's why we will use the pig to load the data by using the pig latin command into our edge based table so for that purpose all you have to do is just quit from this so we have successfully quitted and go to our home path so it is nothing but home slash maria underscore dev which is our username if you hit ls as you can see we don't have the users file because we have deleted it after our session has been completed so we just need to get our movies.user data file as well as the phoenix.pig so this script will load that data from phoenix into our edge base table so just you know the command you just have to type wget https colon slash slash raw dot github user content dot com slash username is ashay patil 11 slash hadoop slash main slash the data file which is movies dot user that's it if everything looks good hit enter and our data file has been downloaded so it's time to get our pig script so again just give the up arrow to copy the previous command and instead of movies.user just give like phoenix.pig so this will just retrieve our pig script hit enter and that's it so our file has been successfully downloaded so let me just walk you through the pig script which is written in pig latin to get you know how we are loading and again reading back the data on the console so for that we have like a nano editor so type nano and phoenix.pick hit enter and as you can see this is our pick script so the first step would be we need to use the register and give the path for the jar file for our phoenix client because it will be necessary so that pick can get the information of all the java classes which are required to integrate phoenix with pick so this jar file is situated in like user hdb current phoenix client which is the same path which we have used for kicking off our sql line.py and here is the jar file so this is the path we need to give by using the register command and the next step would be to create a relation so as you already know in apache spark we use like data frame or rdd to create some jvm objects and work with the data but here we call it as a relation so here we are creating a users relation which is nothing but loading the data from our movies.user file so as you can see this is our home path which is user maria underscore dev and the movies.user which we have just downloaded and we have used the pipe character so this pick storage is indicating that this file is delimited by the pipe characters and we are giving the metadata here so here Similarly, we have like user ID, then age, gender, occupation, and zip. And here you can see this char array, which is nothing but var char. So in pig, we use char array instead of var char. So every tool has their own sets of data types. So you just have to make sure that you're using proper data types. Otherwise, it will throw an error. So this relation is loading the data. Then after creating the relation, we need to save this relation into our edge base table. So for that we are using the store command here. So we are storing the users relation into the address of the table. So as you can see here, we are given the edge base colon users table. So this users tables we have just created through the Phoenix and we have to pass some parameters to communicate with Phoenix. So here you can see the host name, which is localhost. So as we are using the HDB sandbox, the host name would be the localhost. And here is the batch size of 5000 records so this 5000 means that it will pick up the 5000 records at once in the memory and then dump it into our edge base table so it totally depends on the available memory that you can give here so since this file doesn't have much data and we can afford to give like 5000 records that's why we have given 5000 otherwise you can get away with lesser number as well but it totally depends on the volume of the data which you are transferring and so these are the steps for loading the data into our edge base table 
But what about these last ones? So these are just reading back the data from edge base to our console. So here we are again creating the occupations relation and we are loading the data from the edge base table which is users and we are just getting the user ID and occupation. So this is because we just need to get the number of users for each occupation. So it will give us like the different occupation and the number of users which belongs to that specific occupation. So that's why we are using like the group function to group the data according to the occupation. So it will give like the, how many doctors are there or how many engineers are there or how many teachers are there. So this sort of information we will be getting and this is our last relation which give us the count. So it will just give us the occupation and the count of the occupations. So this is just reducing our results and here we are using the dump command to dump that result on the console. So when we run this script, first it will load the data, then we are reading back the data from that specific table and we are grouping it and reducing it by using the aggregation functions. So that will get. So I hope you got a clear understanding what we are going here. So just this few lines of code will does so much work under the hood. So this, so as this is the big job, this big job will be converted into the MapReduce job which will communicate with Phoenix as well as EdgeBase which will load the data into our EdgeBase table. So there are so many technologies that are getting integrated by using this functionality. So I hope you understood it. So if not, just let me know in the comments if you have any doubts and if you're ready, let's kick off this job. But before kicking off this pick script, we need to load our movies.user file into this HDFS path because pig will pick up this file from the HDFS path and not on our Linux system. So as we use the wget command to load that file from GitHub to our Linux box, but we need to export that by using copy from local command to this specific HDFS path. So to do that, just get out from this nano editor. So now we can say like Hadoop FS for file system and give the command dash copy from local and the file name is movies.user and the path is slash user slash maria underscore dev and slash movies.user and that's it. The file has been copied to that specific HDFS path. So we are ready to kick off our pig script now. So to submit the pig job, all you have to do is type pig and give like phoenix dot pig enter and let the job run. So behind the scene, it is converting the pick script into the map reduce job and then it will convert it back into the mappers and reducer function. And as you can see the progress, so this mappers and reducer function will do all the mapping and reducing phase and aggregates the data as per our requirement. And we are communicating it with the Phoenix client so that we can work with edge base tables and load the data in the earlier created table. So as you can see, it is doing all the groundwork for you with the simple lines of code. So first it will load the data. So as you can see, it is using the Tez execution engine here and here you can track the progress of that. So pick can be used on the Tez execution engine, which again uses the DAG, which is direct acyclic graph, which is way more optimized than using the map reduce. So in this case, it is using the Tez execution engine. So we're going to have some separate discussion on the map reduce versus the test and we'll compare the speeds of both the execution engines so that you will get a clear idea. So in the world of big data, the execution speed really matters because to handle the big data, optimizing the memory usage is very important. So it is taking the time. So just grab your coffee and come back once it is completed. I guess the data load is completed now and that's it. Our job has been completed. So as you can see here are the results. So we got like all the occupation and the number of users belonging to that occupation. So as you can see, we have like, so others means they haven't told us about the occupation. So here are the 28 artists, seven doctors, 12 lawyers and so on. So I guess student is very popular and we have like 196 student because it makes sense. It's a movies data sets and obviously student will watch movies more than any other occupation. 
but uh, to surprise i can also see some scientists so 31 scientists also watch some movies so we got some meaning out of our data so this was pretty fun but as you already know we only have like one data node it's not using the basic principle of hadoop which is parallel processing so when we have like big data files such as the files in gigabytes or petabytes and you have like the cluster of many data nodes then you will feel the true power of hadoop ecosystem but this is very important for you to understand how it works by executing these simple lines of code so i hope you got a clear idea how we are using the pig and integrate it with the phoenix so that we can communicate with our edge based table so as you can see just to verify our data again we need to kick off our phoenix command line so to do that again go back to our specific bin folder so which is nothing but cd user hdp current slash phoenix client slash bin and here we have like our sql line.py so just give like python sql line.py so it will just kick off our phoenix service And that's it we are in our phoenix command line so just give like exclamation tables to get the list of tables and here you can see our already created users table so we just loaded some data into it so to verify it just give like select from users and we'll limit it to 10 so it will just first 10 records in our table so that's it we have like users 1 to 10 along with the ages genders occupation and a zip code where those users are residing so this was pretty powerful and we used a lot of technologies by executing our pig script. So first, as you already know that pig sits on top of MapReduce, but in this example, we use the test execution engine so that pig job is converted into the test job, which retrieves the data file from the specific HDFS location and communicates with Phoenix and EdgeBase and the edge underlying EdgeBase table to load the data and also we have read it back the data by giving some aggregation function where we got like the number of users each occupation have. So this was enough for you to understand how the Phoenix works and how we can use it to manipulate the data present in edge based tables. So if you have any doubts, just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So to clear up our mess, just drop this table because we don't need it now. So drop table users and that's it. And yeah, the table has been dropped. So just quit out from the command line and done. Then again, go to the Ambari and click on edge base. And as we are done with our tutorial, just go and stop that service now and from stop and it will just stop the edge base service. So as the edge base service has been successfully stopped. So just go to the HDB sandbox now and go to the ACPI shutdown. It is recommended to properly shut down your HDB sandbox otherwise it may create some issues in future. So once you are done with it, so just close it properly to avoid some issues in future. So I hope you like this lecture. So please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media which I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.